This is a video on radioactive half-life. As an introduction, we have a polonium-211 atom there. And if we allow it to play and decay because it's unstable, it will decay into lead-207. So we set that. Now, when the decay occurs, where we don't know. So it's a completely random process. In this particular instance, it hasn't decayed yet, and it decayed after 485 milliseconds. If I reset this, the time of decay would be different, because again, the, the time when it decays is completely random. So that doesn't tell us much about the element in terms of uh, when it decays. If it's a completely random process, we're unable to determine when that decay will take place. But if we have a radioactive sample with hundreds or millions or billions of atoms present, Rather than determining when each individual atom can decay, what we can do is work out the time taken for half of the individual atoms to decay. And over the course of the lifetime of the element, the time taken for half of the radioactive elements to decay is always the same. So if I now have 20 here, if I increase that to 40, what I'm saying is if there are 40 undecayed elements here, the time taken for half of those to decay, that is the time taken for them to be only 20 undecayed elements present, is called the half-life. And that time is a time that we should note. Uh, in this particular instance, it's half a second. Now, if after half a second there were 20 radioactive elements or radioactive atoms left, then after the next half second, there'd be half of that left. There'd only be 10 left. After the half seconds after that, there would only be five undecayed elements left, and so on and so forth. So let's have a look at this. 40 of these, we're going to press play. The number of undecayed elements will be here on the top left, number of decayed ones on the, the bottom, but we keep an eye on that. And the time taken there, the half-life, should be the time taken for half of those radioactive uh, atoms to decay. There are 40 at the moment, so after one half-life, there should be roughly 20 left. I see that number is dropping down. Now it's approximate, right? So we can see that we had 40, but after one half-life, approximately half of those radioactive um, atoms were left. And what physicists would have done is they would have looked at the half-life for different substances, and each particular element would have a different half-life. So the polonium-211 that we have here has a half-life of one second, something like... Um, Carbon, uh, carbon-14, has a half-life of around 5,000 years. They're very different. So let's reset again. <clears throat> and I have 40. There we go. And after one half-life, we'll see how many radioactive particles are left. So there's a half-life. After one half-life, half of the radioactive particles are left. Now let's have a look at the next half-life now. So for the next half a second, so it's going to go from there to there, we should go from 20 radioactive particles down to 10. So we're just waiting to see that happen. And it's just below it there that actually drops after the, the second half-life. So after in the second half-life, the 20 radioactive particles decrease to 10. So what we're saying is statistically in one half-life, the number of radioactive particles halves. Okay, so let's have a look at that in a bit more detail. So the definition, first of all, the, the half-life is the time taken for the number of radioactive particles in a sample to half. So if there are 500 particles in a sample at the start, after one half-life, there'd be 250 radioactive particles left. After the second half-life, there'd be 125. After the third, there'd roughly be 63. And after each consecutive half-life, the number of radioactive particles halves each time. 